Okay, it says we're live. Hey everybody, I hope this is actually working. It took an awful long time to actually go live, so I'm gonna check in the group and see if I'm showing up because we're live and I live in the middle of nowhere with really bad internet, so anything could happen. I decided to take a chance and do this at home today. Hi, Kimberly, and um, Hopefully, this will stay streaming and work, so we will see what happens. But if you can see me, and if you can hear me, let me know, please, in the comments. Say hi to me when you get here. Oh, it says I'm live. I hope it's working. I don't want to start playing it because it will just stop my hotspot from working. So, anyway, I am super excited to be here today. We're going to call this uh, episode one of the Courageously Intentional Living show. Um, I've gone live before, but I've never gone live on a schedule. And um, my hair is driving me crazy, so sorry. I'm going to do that. And um, so we're going to do this regularly every Friday at 1 p.m. So I hope you join me. If you can, if you can tune in live, that's great because I can read your comments and answer your questions live. Um, and if you can't, that's no big deal. You can join the replay later and watch later. And hi, Ashley. So, what are we doing here? Why are we here? Why the Cour Courageously Intentional Living Show? So, I started this group, well, I started the group a little later, but I started my page about a year ago. And it's really my passion to help people start to live more intentionally and focus on what really matters to them through the process of simplifying and removing all the unnecessary clutter from their lives so they can focus on what matters. And what happened over the past year is that I have started attracting mostly moms, moms who are really busy, really overwhelmed, and they just don't really know where to start and they know they have... Um, all this clutter that they're dealing with and they need help to get rid of it and um, in order to start living more intentionally and simplify their lives they need to get rid of some of that clutter so I wanted to start today off with the first episode talking about the different types of clutter um, and really how I got here just a quick quick story quick bio is um, eight or nine years ago or so now um, I was in that place where I was super overwhelmed, super overworked, and there was I was being bombarded with clutter from different angles, physical clutter, schedule clutter, the different types of clutter I'm going to talk about with you today. And um, something had to give, something had to change. My kids were little at the time. I was juggling the work-home balance, trying to be um, in too many places at once and trying to pay attention to my kids and be a good mom and pay attention to my husband and I was just completely overwhelmed with it all and so um, I, it started with me um, with physical clutter um, so I started clearing the physical clutter and as I did that things got simpler and lighter and I had more time I had more energy I didn't realize at first how much all that clutter was sucking up my time and my energy and my attention. And um, it morphed into this much larger, deeper journey than I have to explain with you here. Um, maybe we'll talk about that another time. I don't have a whole lot of time to go into that in this video because I don't want to keep you guys here forever. I could talk on this topic for a long time. So um, it basically led me to here where a lot of people were asking me um, how I managed to do the things that I've been doing and so there was this need to um, to share what I know with people so that's how we got here and that's how the courageously intentional living show was born and I have notes to try and keep me on track because I'll get off on a tangent if I don't so um, today we're gonna talk about the different types of clutter and how they're weighing us down and how they're holding us back. So when we say the word clutter, and I don't know if you guys can see me. Can you see me? Because I can only see um, a couple of comments. So I hope you can see me. 
Let me just check again real quick. Um, do, 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 do. Can you guys see me? Can you hear me? Give me a yes in the comments if you can. Well, hopefully I'm not frozen. I'm going to keep going. Um, thank you, Chris. Hi, Chris. Okay, good. You can see me. You can hear me. All right. So, sorry for my squeaky chair, by the way. It's a very squeaky chair. So, when people say the word clutter, a lot of people immediately think of the physical clutter. Um, that's the thing that comes to mind for people most prominently. Um, and that is the one that is the most obvious in our immediate environment, right? But there are other forms of clutter that are weighing us down in our lives. And so we need to address those other forms of clutter as well so that we can get back to focusing on those things that really matter to us and stop letting all those different forms of clutter suck up our time, our energy, our attention. So physical clutter is the first one. It's the most obvious. Um, and we know that it steals our time and our attention and our energy, whether it's your house that's cluttered. Um, okay, Ashley, you can come back for the replay later. Thanks for being here. Um, so there's addressing the physical clutter. And um, I have a process to help with that. But um, just a quick tip is really, you know, asking yourself what you really need um, and assessing whether it's serving you in your life. So physical clutter is one of the things that we want to um, address. And I'm going to try and keep this video not too long. Um, the next is schedule clutter. So a lot of people don't um, think about this. They know that they're busy and they know that they have all these places they're supposed to be and all these places they're supposed to be doing, but they don't often think about the ways that their schedule is cluttered and the ways that they can change that. So schedule clutter is a big deal. Um, obviously there's things that we have to do, you know. Um, we have to go to work, we have a certain work schedule, um, we have to do certain things in our life, and the truth is we also put a lot on our plates that we don't necessarily need to put on our plates. We often over obligate ourselves and we feel like we have to do certain things. We have to participate in certain events. When somebody invites us to something, we have to say yes. And we schedule up our own or we clutter up our own schedules this way. And, you know, for those of us that have kids, then your kids get involved in things too. And we're juggling all these different things that we're supposed to be doing. And so, we really want to take um, a look at that and remind ourselves that it's okay to slow down, that we don't have to do everything, right? We don't have to be everywhere all at once. Um, I can't even tell you how many times I in the past and see other people doing, like they have three different events to be to in a day and that is just too much, right? So we have to look at these places in our lives where we can say, um, maybe it's not the time for this thing right now and maybe I don't really need to be doing this and maybe it happens in seasons. Um, summertime is a really big um, busy season for me um, where there's certain things I do in the summer that I'm not doing in the winter, right? So you really want to take a look at those things and ask yourself why you're doing these things and if they're really serving the purpose in your life. Hi Alicia! Um, so the next is digital clutter. This is one that a lot of people overlook um, and it's happening now more than ever because of our connectedness, because of the internet and everybody has a smartphone in their hands and there are wonderful things about that. I mean that's how I'm connecting with you here right now. I have my cell phone on a tripod and I downloaded the Facebook app so that I could do this live with you guys. And um, so there are good things about that. There are also potentially negative things about the digital clutter. So I'm talking about things like your email, um, Facebook, Instagram, you know, all the social media. Um, and we have these things downloaded on our phones and in our hands. And there's notifications going off for all these things, right? So 
you know, you're in the middle of trying to do something and your phone is pinging away, beeping away because you've got emails coming in. You've got notifications from Facebook. You've got notifications from Instagram. And then you've got somebody texting you and you've got somebody calling you. And our attention is so fragmented. Sorry, I'm talking really fast because I get really passionate about the subject. Um, but it even goes as deep as like, you know, your computer and what you have on your computer, like how cluttered up is the desktop of your computer? Um, and how, um, you know, one of the things that I struggle with, um, let me tell you my project for 2020 is going through my photos. I have, I looked today just so I could tell you, I have 7,886 photos on my computer. I can't possibly look at all those in a sitting. What am I doing with all those photos, right? So we have this technology and we have this um, ability to connect with each other through the internet. It's also causing our lives to be much more cluttered. And it's drawing our attention away from what we're trying to focus on in the moment. So um, just a tip for that is to really reevaluate like, um, maybe turn your notifications off on your phone and only leave the notifications on for things that are necessary so you can get rid of a little bit of that distraction. Um, unsubscribe from things that you're not reading, that you're not participating in anymore. Um, you know, um, clean up the desktop of your computer. Only leave the stuff out that you need there. Um, so... The next one I want to jump into after digital clutter is mental clutter. So this is a big one. Mental clutter is the, um, like the thoughts we have running in our head all the time. Like, oh, and when I wake up immediately, it's like, oh, I have to do this. I have to be here. I have this appointment at this time. And we have this like running narrative in our head all the time. And, um, it can really cause a lot of stress of and overwhelm if we don't have a good system to keep ourselves on track. And, um, oh, Ashley, yes, I've even silenced my ringer for everyone else besides my husband and parents. Yes, exactly, Ashley. So, like, I turn on my do not disturb when I'm working so that I don't have all these things coming in. And I've actually removed a lot of apps from my phone um, just because I, I want to be very intentional when I jump onto, I have to have the Facebook app for this, but I didn't up until now because I want to be really intentional when I get on Facebook or when I get online about what I'm using it for instead of just scroll, 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 right? So um, back to mental clutter. So we all have this like mental gymnastics that's going on in our heads, right? Especially moms. We're really busy. We're trying to um, keep up with our family, keep up with everybody's schedules, manage our household, manage our work life. And um, I saw this really great cartoon. And if I can find it later, I'll share it in the group um, about the perspective from a mom of what her day is like and how it's different from her husband's because we constantly have this thing going in our head like okay I have to get up by this time I'm gonna take a walk or do my workout I gotta get the kids breakfast I gotta get the kids on the bus I have to run into town I need to get this this and this from the grocery store and it goes on and on and on right so um, and, and then when we lay down to go to sleep at night we have all these thoughts about oh, I need to get this done tomorrow I didn't get this done today oh man, I can't believe I didn't get that done. Now I'm going to have to do it tomorrow and it's adding something to tomorrow's list and we just have all this clutter going on up here that we need to somehow pull out and keep it from cluttering up our focus and we want to focus on being present in the moment. So there's different ways you can do this um, and it really it just comes down to like we're overstimulated by all these things, right? But you can use old-fashioned pen and paper to write stuff down. Some people like bullet journaling. Um, you can use apps. I have a Google Calendar and I have a to-do list app. And that helps me kind of just, like, when those thoughts start running and I'm just like, ah! I make sure that I write down my thoughts or I throw them into my app real quick so that I won't forget later on. And then it gets it out of my head at that moment. 
and then I can go back to what I'm doing and focus on what I'm doing. Hi, Tracy. So there's mental clutter. Now, there's also emotional clutter, which kind of ties in to mental clutter. They all kind of tie in together. But the emotional clutter that I'm talking about is like the persistent inner narrative that we have going on maybe about ourselves um, or about other people or what's happening. Um, it's, it's the inner voice that's going on inside, right? And um, thoughts like, let me give you an example, like, um, I do everything, or I'm not good at this, or um, I'm a terrible friend because I didn't call my friend back, I'm a terrible mom because I yelled at my kids, and we have this narrative going on that we're thinking, but we're almost, it's like we're disconnected from it, like we're not aware that we're doing it to ourselves. Like we say things to ourselves that we wouldn't say to a loved one or a friend, and we don't recognize that we're doing it. We just, it's just habit, you know, we just think these things. Or, you know, like, oh, I did all these things today and nobody even noticed. Nobody noticed, and this is one that I struggle with, is nobody even noticed the 24 small little tasks that I did today that contributed to the family's wellness, so nobody appreciates me, right? This is emotional clutter. So, hi, Sandy. Um, so, we really need to start paying attention to our thoughts and our limiting beliefs about ourselves. And so one of the ways to do this is to first recognize that you're doing it. When you see that you're doing it, stop yourself and ask yourself if that's really true and why you're telling yourself that, right? And then you want to create a new story. Just change the narrative, create a new story, and start talking to yourself like you would talk to a friend, right? So that's one of the ways to handle the emotional clutter. Um, there are some other forms of clutter that... I don't want to go into too deeply in this live because I don't want to um, take up too much of your time. Um, but there is also like spiritual clutter, um, which can cause um, like an inability to nurture and support your passions and your visions in life. And there's, I don't really like the term for this, um, but I hear it a lot, relationship clutter. I don't know if I like that term because I don't like to think of, um, I think relationships are really important, so I don't like to think of them as clutter necessarily, but you can look at it in that way. Um, you know, some of us have, we've all had relationships with people that were um, potentially unhealthy or toxic in a way that wasn't benefiting either person in the relationship, right? It could be with a friend, a family member, a co-worker, a spouse. Um, and we really need to start taking a look at our relationships as well. And this is kind of a topic for um, another episode because that's really a deeper topic. But um, it's really important to be intentional with who you surround yourself with. And that doesn't mean that you don't accept or love somebody. You can accept them and love them for who they are. You can also set healthy boundaries for yourself to make sure that um, the interaction with that person is not affecting your life in such a way that it's negative for you or for the other person. So um, these are some of the different types of clutter I wanted to touch on today. I hope that um, I wasn't talking too fast for you guys. I get a little fired up. Um, so there's something that these all have in common. Well, there's several things that these all have in common. Um, all these various forms of clutter in our lives cause us to be overwhelmed. They cause us to be exhausted. They suck up our time. They suck up our attention. They suck up our energy. And they cause us to miss out on really participating in the things that matter to us, the things that are most important to us. So, um, if you've seen these things affecting your life in that way, just give me a, hey, me, in the comments. Like, yes, um, these things have sucked up my time, my energy, um, because I want to hear from you guys, too. And if you have any questions, put them down below. Um, so, the other thing that these all have in common is that... 
So we gather this clutter in our lives, and a lot of it happens totally unconsciously. It's just like, you know, one day we're like, wow, I'm really overwhelmed with all this stuff going on. What is going on? And part of it is that we don't have systems to deal with it in a good way. But going even deeper than that is that the clutter in our life is a manifestation of deeper problems. And I don't necessarily want to call them problems, um, of deeper things at work. So when we're gathering this clutter, um, we're not really thinking about it consciously, but clutter is the manifestation of decisions that we've made in our life. And often clutter happens when we're making decisions from a place of fear. So I'll give you an example. I told you not too long ago that I have almost 8,000 photos in my computer. So even eight or nine years later on my journey, I've been, you know, decluttering and simplifying for a long time. I still have things that I need to work on. And, um, you're never completely finished with the journey, right? It's an ongoing journey. So I don't want you to feel bad about like not getting there right away. This is a continuous process. So when I look at all these photos that I have stored on my computer, yes, I love my family. I love looking at photos. I love my friends and I love the memories that are associated with the photos. But if I really stop and ask myself why I have that many photos unorganized on my computer, yes, I don't have a good system to organize them, but the other reason I have that many photos is because I'm afraid. What am I afraid of? Okay, well, let's take yesterday for, for instance. Um, I got a new tripod for my phone, so the kids and I were playing around with it and I was snapping photos and now that we have all these um, digital devices with cameras everyone has a smartphone with a camera it's super easy to take all these photos and so I love my kids very dearly and I love taking pictures of what they're doing because I want to remember that memory right and so when my daughter or my son is doing something that I want to capture a picture of I sit there with my phone and I rapid fire, like I wanna get the best picture, right? So I'm like hitting the button, and now I have 20 photos, right? And then I go through to look at the photos, and I'm like, oh, that one's really nice, I like that one. Oh, he's making a good face in this one, and her face is kind of funny, and oh, but I like the face she made in this one. And all of a sudden, I wanna keep all 20 photos when the intention was to just snap one good photo. Why is that? Because I'm afraid that I'm going to forget that moment. That's what the root of it is. I'm afraid that if I delete those photos, that I'm not going to remember all those funny faces my kids made. So that's at the root of it. It's a decision made in fear. So I have all these photos that um, I keep because, hi Daphne, I am afraid that I'm gonna forget. Like, I'm going to forget what they looked like when they were three. Or I'm going to forget, um, you know, the event that we were at and the funny face that they made. And so, um, really going through and honestly, like, assessing that and saying, okay, well, I think it's reasonable to keep a certain amount of photos and go through and pick the best ones and let go of the rest. Because the rest, honestly... I don't scroll through all of those photos very often because there's too many of them. And then each one doesn't mean as much, right? So um, really getting honest and saying, you know, in any of these forms of clutter, whether it's physical clutter, schedule clutter, digital clutter, mental clutter, emotional clutter, when you start assessing the things that you have, what you're doing, what you're involved in, who you're spending time with. What you really want to do is ask yourself, why? Why do I have this thing? Why do I do this thing? Why am I involved in this thing? Um, you know, ask yourself why. Get to the deeper root cause of it. And how is it affecting you? Is it serving you? Is it serving others? And 
Is it positively affecting your life? Is it helping you achieve your goals where you're trying to get to? Or is it not? And the things that are not um, effectively helping you reach your goals and create the life that you want to live, the life you love, an intentional life, then that stuff is all clutter. That stuff is the stuff that's unnecessary. So ask yourself these questions and see where you can make the changes, right? See what things you can let go of. And it takes a lot of courage to do that. It's, we have so much emotion and memories tied up in all these things that we have and that we do. And, um, I mean, we could extend, we could expand greatly on this topic, so I won't go too far into it, but, um, you know, there are, um, I kind of lost my train of thought there, but you really just want to take a look at why, why are you doing it? And is it helping you? And if it's not, then reassess whether you need to have that thing, do that thing, be a part of that thing, right? And that's how you start to create an intentional life. And that's how you start to ditch the overwhelm. Because it wasn't until I started letting go of all these things that I had space in my schedule. I had time in my schedule. I could breathe. Um, I didn't feel like life was dragging me around. All of a sudden, I was in charge and I was in control of my day. And ultimately, that's what we want, right? We want to be doing more of the things that we love. We want to be spending time with the people who are important with, to us, right? Because arguably, relationships in our life is the most important part of our existence as human beings, right? So clutter are these things that are keeping us from those things that matter. So the other tip that I have for you is to avoid making too many changes at once because you don't want to overwhelm yourself and go into a state of chaos, right? So pick the things that are most um, aggravating to you right now, that are causing you the most stress right now, and start removing those things one by one, right? If it's, you know, if it's physical clutter, if it's the laundry and the dishes, oh my gosh, the laundry and the dishes. Those were the worst and the kids' toys, that's where I started. Um, taking those things out of the equation, reducing those things, making those things simpler by first having less and then having a good system in place to handle those things was a huge weight off my shoulders. Finally, I had a little bit of breathing room and then I moved on from there, from the physical clutter to the schedule clutter. Like, okay, what can I... Um, what can I cut out? What things are really important for me? What things are really important for my family? The mental, emotional clutter. Um, okay, what are these things going on in my head? How can I help get some of the things out of my head and on paper so I don't have to think of them about them so much? And how can I change the thoughts about myself that I'm having um, to be more positive and to be more encouraging to myself and more accepting of myself? And, um, you know, start with the thing that's causing the most stress. Usually for people, it's physical clutter. Um, and that's why often that's where I start with people when I work with moms. It's the physical clutter. And, um, by the way, I have a mini course on that if you're interested. It's called Declutter with Jen. Um, and I'll post the link in the group somewhere. But that's really all I have for you today is that's the different types of clutter it's how it's affecting your life how it's holding you back from the things that matter and um, I hope you found the tips helpful um, to help you start removing some of that clutter so you can start ditching the overwhelm and get back to focusing on what really matters um, I can't even stress to you how much it changed my life to start to simplify in that way um, it completely changed my life and it started with a really seemingly simple decision It didn't seem that significant at the time to just start decluttering my house because it was overwhelming me And I I felt like I couldn't get anything done in my only days off from work and it just um, Really expanded and trickled into the other areas of my life And so that's why I'm here sharing this with you all because I hope that we can help you get to the same place where you are spending your days focusing on what matters to you and not getting bogged down and weighted down by all the types of clutter in your life. 
So, um, thank you for joining me for this first episode of the Courageously Intentional Living Show. Um, I'm really excited to be doing this with you guys every week. So don't be afraid to ask questions or post in the group or like if there's topics you're curious about and you want me to address, let me know. Um, and I am actually thinking about um, download these, downloading these videos and pulling out the audio to put it in kind of podcast format because one of the things in one of my courses that um, somebody told me was really helpful was having just audio files so they could listen on the go. So I'm going to look into doing that so that you can also listen on the go um, if you can't catch me live in the group. So thank you all for being here. Um, this has been great. And feel free to post in the group. I'll be in the group um, every day uh, until next week. And then we'll come back for episode two next week and I will announce the topic of that very soon so happy Friday thanks thanks Chris and I will see you guys next week